New details about a dramatic plane crash on I-95 in Florida. And we are now finding out more about why a small plane crashed onto I-95 in Brevard County. Incredible video from a viewer shows the plane touched down there on top of a Toyota Camry. We also want to show you some video from Chopper 2 over the scene after the crash happened. The NTSB says that the pilot there was forced to make an emergency landing because of the situation. Wow. Wow. That was unbelievable. A beach baron lands on top of a car on I-95. Let's try to break down what happened here in this incident. And it's it's just unbelievable to watch the video of this, but I'm going to go back and we're doing it in slow motion and show you what happened. The aircraft is November 95 uh, Kilo Charlie. That's the call sign of the aircraft. It's a Beechcraft 95 C-55. And uh, I've flown Beechcraft twin engines, but it was the King Air. So I'm going to kind of lean on my friends out there that have flown Barons in the comments. Let me know what you think happened and fill in the details um, that I can't supply here. But this aircraft took off out of Merritt Island Airport uh, in uh, yeah, central Florida, it's in Brevard County. And uh, on an instructional flight, uh, both pilots were age 27, which kind of indicates to me maybe it was uh, like an instructor, instructor flight. Uh, and uh, more on that in a minute. But uh, at around 5.45 p.m. on Monday, December 8th, this airplane now shows up uh, in distress, landing on I-95. What happened prior to that? Well, they had taken off out of Merritt Island, uh, and they had uh, flown a small pattern up north and then back down south again and then back up. And that's pretty typical for a training flight. You're going to kind of just go out and tool around for a little bit and get some of your stuff done. At some point in that, and not too far into this training flight, they turn left back towards the airport. Now, either they were done with their training, which is kind of unlikely, it would be a very short training flight, or there was already something wrong with the airplane and they're getting pointed back towards the airport. As they're getting pointed to back towards the airport, uh, they clearly hear in the video, and according to the reports, lose both engines. Why would this airplane lose both engines? I'm gonna give you a breakdown of the top five things that could cause a dual engine failure on a Baron. Some of them are absolutely ridiculous, but the last couple of ones are very, very plausible. So I'll tell you what that's all about. But they're lined up on I-95 when they lose both engines. They're now, uh, there's a, there was a swamp area off, I think, to their right, and there's a, the I-95 to their left. They make a choice to try to land on I-95. Um, the NTSB obviously will be looking at that very closely because they collide with this 2023 Toyota Camry. The 57 year old lady was taken to the hospital. We've heard really insignificant injuries, uh, but any injury is a significant injury when it's your injury. And uh, imagine the shock in this lady's mind when this airplane lands on top of her. There she is just driving down the middle lane on the freeway, minding her own business. And all of a sudden there's a collision and she has no idea what happens. And then she looks out and over top of her comes this twin engine airplane that collides with the, the center gate rail and everything else. And she kind of skids off uh, to the side. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at the moment of impact when this airplane comes down. So this is in super slow motion. It's going to come in from the top right of your screen and come down. I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to make comments as it comes in. Let's watch. All right, I'm going to stop the airplane, the action right there. Right now, this guy's trying to get lined up on I-95. If that Camry hadn't been there, this would have been just a touchdown and a, and a rollout, but he can't help it because he's got no more power left. It looks like both engines are windmilling at this point. They're still turning, but they're producing no power, uh, which indicates that they're both not operating. Uh, here we go. Let's pick it up again and watch the collision. Wham, right there. All right, freeze it right there. That left prop, you can see now stopping. So it was windmilling a little bit. Had it been powered, it would have kept going for a couple of rotations and, and would have probably dug into the cab of that car and might have killed the lady driving it. But it they come down on top of her right in the back, the left engine and the left prop strike the left side of the car right where the driver is. And uh, fortunately, that engine was just windmilling. So it stops uh, and it cuts in slices into the car, but doesn't hit her. Wow.
That, I mean, if I was this lady, I'd say go out and play the lottery tomorrow because this was your lucky day. All right, let's pick it up from here because this airplane's going to bounce and go over top of the car. Watch this. Ooh. Oh, please. Oh, my goodness. All right, oh watch it goodness. again. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my <laughs> These goodness. guys are pulling over and, and with a thousand oh, my goodnesses. All right, let me see the video if there's any more here to watch. The plane just crashed onto a... Yep, onto there it is. It's another video. Holy Yeah. Wow. No kidding. I'm not even joking. A small plane just crashed onto a car in the Holy all right, that's about enough of that. So um, they uh, interviewed these two uh, later. It was a father and son, and they, they're in shock. They can't believe what they just saw. So what they saw was that airplane coming over top. It lands on top of the Camry, uh, and, and shockingly, everybody walks away. Both pilots, neither, nobody's injured at all in the airplane. The airplane's lost. The Camry is lost, for sure. Uh, the lady inside the Camry, minor injuries, taken to the hospital. She's fine um, afterwards. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the two pilots, both 27 years old, which that my antennas go up with that. Why is that? It's not because of their age. It's because they're the, both the same age, which kind of might indicate that there was an instructor instructor flight uh i was in an I, when i was in the navy on active duty um i was in a squadron called the vt-28 and vt-28 was down in corpus christi texas uh, originally that squadron was a, a king air t-44 training squadron for students uh, the navy wanted to decommission it because there was another T-44 training squadron, VT-31, and they didn't need two. So they said, let's get rid of one. Uh, we kind of talked them in down there to turning VT-28 into an instructor, instructor squadron. I showed up <coughs> at the minute they decided to do that. And I had uh, two years of uh, active duty to go, and I had a lot of instructional background and so forth. So they asked me to be kind of the the head of that. So I was the, the lead instructor at this instructor squadron. So I did a lot of time flying around with instructors in teaching them to teach students. So one of the things that you know about anytime there's a chief pilot in the cockpit or a Czech airman and a chief pilot, um, the risk factor goes way up, right? And anytime you're in an instructor, instructor situation, the risk factor goes up. You go, why is that? Aren't those the two most experienced pilots? Yes, that's true. But then there tends to be a lot of kind of goofing around and a lot of camaraderie. And, and, and you don't have that, the edge that you're on when you're training a student, you don't have when you're training another instructor. Uh, you have to talk yourself into it. And you have to remind yourself that there's a risk factor here. So um, having said that, we, I never had any incidents when I was instructing other instructors, but it does go up. And if this was that case, you know, what was going on with this flight? It's, now here's the, the possible causes of what could have caused this engine fi dual engine failure in a Baron. And I wanna hear from my Baron buddies out there in the comments, let me know about these. They start from, I'll give you the, the most ridiculous ones first, right? And I'm not saying that this is what happened, I'm just saying this could have happened, right? But it's like next to zero, all right? Extremely rare are some sort of electrical failure that caused a catastrophic thing on the airplane and both engines fail. The next would be a bird strike. And it doesn't seem to be any indication of a dual bird strike on this, could be, but no indication so far. Um, air intake issue, uh, both, engines somehow the air intakes got clogged for some reason there's been rare instances where a like a cover to an air intake got left in um, but these these guys have been flying around for a while that probably wasn't it uh, the next level of yeah probably not but this could have happened is some sort of pilot or operational causes now you, you get into more of a likely scenario with a pilot induced issue here because um, it is a training flight and on training flights typically you'll fail one engine now failing an engine on a training flight doesn't mean that you shut the engine off failing it means you just take the throttle and you pull it all the way back to idle and you simulate, <coughs> excuse me, you simulate as though that engine failed. Uh, why? Because if something goes wrong with the other engine, you want to push the power up on your, on your good engine or the one that you're simulating was failed. However, there have been scenarios where a student or somebody else has shut down the other engine, uh, in which case, yeah, okay, th that's a possibility. It could be that they actually lost one engine and in the process of shutting down that engine, they shut down the other engine. That's happened. That would be a pilot-induced dual engine failure. 
So simultaneous engine shutdown, some sort of throttle setting problem, a mixture prop problem on these airplanes. I own a private airplane, I own a long easy, and I gotta always be fiddling with the mixture. You can get the mixture wrong and fail the engine. Both engines, eh, again, it's very unlikely. Okay, the next level is this, environmental issues. It, was there icing that day that caused both engines to fail? Not very likely in, in Brevard County, even though it is December, you can have icing in those situations. I don't see any weather out there to precipitate that, no pun intended, but it could have been uh, that. Now, the next level, and this is much more likely, uh, but not what I think it was, much more likely is mechanical failure, um, fuel vent blockage for some reason uh, that would have caused both engines to flame out uh, or to, uh, excuse me, stop working, and electrical fuel pump failure could have been both a fuel pump went bad, all right? Uh, loss of both engines, and the loss of both engines would have been what I said before, either pilot-induced or for some really bizarre billion-to-one reason, both engines decided to stop working at the same time. Very, very unlikely. Okay, number one on Captain Steve's, what I think most likely happened, it's some form of fuel starvation or fuel exhaustion. Now there's a difference between the two. What, what's the difference between the two? All right, fuel uh, starvation <clears throat> is that the improper fuel tank was selected. So on, on these airplanes, you have to manage your fuel and you've got fuel in different tanks and you have to manually switch back and forth to the tank that's got the most gas in it. On my airplane, I've uh, I've got a Garmin 3X touch system in it. I just pre-program in it for it to alert me every 30 minutes. So when I'm flying around every 30 minutes, I get the little warning that says fuel tank. Now it doesn't mean I'm out of fuel. It's just a reminder to me to switch fuel tanks. So I'll look and I'll see, okay, yeah, that one's low. This one's got more fuel. All right, I switch over to that one. Then I take a little bit out of that one. And then it reminds me again, oh, okay, that one's lower than this one. I switch back. So you gotta manually switch back and forth. It's possible that one of the tanks just went dry and they didn't switch over. Um, it's possible that when they were on the ground before they took off, uh, they were supposed to fuel the airplane and didn't. How could that happen? Well, one pilot thinks the other pilot did it. That's an instructor on instructor thing, right? Well, I, I thought you did it. I thought you did it. And they, they don't do a good pre-flight check and they take off and they get airborne and they're looking around all of a sudden, yikes, we're out of gas. So fuel starvation would be they didn't switch to the tank in enough time. They're at 1,500 feet when they're lined up coming back into Merritt Island. So did they know something was wrong or were they just kind of coming back to land? Hard to say, gonna find out with a preliminary report. But at any rate, let's assume that they knew something was wrong at the time and they're headed back towards the airport. Um, and maybe the other tank was out of gas. They didn't have any fuel yet left. That would be the other fuel-related scenario, which would be fuel exhaustion. They, they were totally out of gas. You go, how in the world could pilots run out of gas? Well, it's more common than you think. It doesn't happen in the, in the airlines because there's just so many layers for that not to happen. Uh, but in civilian flight, it's, it's a fairly common thing. Uh, Leonard Skinner, back in the day, the whole band died practically. Uh, because of that, they had landed uh, their airplane to go refuel. The only thing is they forgot to refuel and the pilots take off and they get airborne and they get up to, I don't know, a little off the end of the runway and both engines flame out and you can't relight the engines when there's no fuel. So that's a real awful thing. One of the things we see with this is this airplane crashes on top of this car, spins around, but there's no fireball, there's no explosion. That might indicate to me that they're out of gas, that it was fuel exhaustion. So in my mind, it's 50-50 whether they fuel starved the engines by mistake or they were just simply out of gas. Either one of those is a pilot issue, all right? Um, both selectors could be left off in this airplane. Uh, less likely in all of the fuel-related issues is some sort of water contamination or vapor lock. I don't think either one of those um, was the issue. My guess, I think it was fuel starvation, but it could have been fuel exhaustion. I'm like 55, 45 on which one um, I think it was. But we're gonna find out here as the details come along. I wanted you to see that video because 
it's unbelievable to watch this airplane land on top of this car and this lady is so lucky to be alive and these pilots are lucky to be alive uh, it's too bad that they couldn't have gotten just down in front of her or far enough behind her that they wouldn't run into her but again the airplane's lost the car is lost everybody walks away from this thing and um <coughs> there's all the possibilities of what could have contributed to this airplane landing on I-95. As we get more details when the preliminary report comes out, <coughs> as we get more details when the preliminary report comes out, we will pass those on to you. Now you know, I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe. All right, if you want to see some more videos on airplanes that have had some trouble and had to make an emergency landing, check out either one of these.